Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, T-Cells in COVID-19, Translating Research Findings into Clinical Options. I am Marie Stone of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and brought to you by Milteni Biotech. To learn more, visit miltennibiotech.com. We encourage you to participate today by submitting any questions you may have during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. You may also submit any technical issues here as well if you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation. This webinar is educational and thus offers free continuing education credits. Please click on the continuing education window at the bottom of your screen to obtain your credits. I'd like to now welcome our speakers. Dr. Lorenz Fulla, PhD, Global Product Manager for Antigen and Virus-Specific T-Cells, Milteni Biotech, and Dr. Kirsten Langeveld, Global Product Manager, Milteni Biotech. Dr. Fulla and Dr. Langeveld, you may now begin your presentation. Yes, welcome everybody to today's webinar on T-cells in COVID-19, translating research findings into clinical options. I'm Lawrence and I'm a product manager for antigen-specific T-cells. So the webinar today will have two parts. In the first part, I will show you our complete workflow and products that have been developed to study T-cells specifically in SARS-CoV-2 infections, but also in other contexts. In the second part, Kirsten Langefeld, product manager for cell therapy, will um, show you how to use cell therapy to um, fight infections such as SARS-CoV-2. And she will also highlight some preclinical data that has been published recently. So let's start. But before we start, I would like to ask you to um, please acknowledge the display disclaimer. So here you see today's agenda. So we actually have six main points. So in the first part, I will start with a brief introduction, then introduce you to our um, workflow for the analysis of antigen virus specific T cells, and then show you our product solutions that we have developed for this workflow. In the second part, Kirsten will show you how to use cell therapy to fight infections. Then also here introduce you to our products that can be used for various cell therapy applications and then finish with some highlighted um, clinical data that has been recently published. And I also just want to let you know that we will make the slides available after the session and that the slides are also very interactive. So whenever you see like these orange um, circles or blue circles here that you can see here on the top, also these uh, little pink hands, you can just click on it and then you will find uh, more information. So why do we need to study the immune system in COVID-19 in more detail? Well, of course, it is important to know that we have to study the entire immune response to SARS-CoV-2 infections in order to understand the disease. As indeed all the immune cells, so for example, myeloid cells, as well as lymphocytes, so T and B cells, could play a critical role in disease outcome and also its final clearance. Some myeloid cells, for example, macrophages, could also play a detrimental role in the disease and therefore could be studied as novel drug targets. So lymphocytes, on the other hand, so T and B cells, actually play a key role in the defense against the disease, but are also responsible for building up immunological memory, which will then, in the end, give us protection from future infections. And of course, this protection is also the ultimate goal of all vaccination strategies that are being developed against SARS-CoV-2. And therefore, monitoring of these um, SARS-CoV-2-specific T and B cells could actually help us to understand the efficacy of all these COVID-19 vaccines. However, there are also many other research applications where these cells could be analyzed, for example, for the identification of asymptomatic positive patients, or also for the development of therapeutic antibodies. And we will see a lot more of these applications on the following slides. So while it's definitely very important to analyze the entire immune response to SARS-CoV-2 infection, it is particularly critical to focus really on the cellular immune responses. So in this case, the SARS-CoV-2 specific T and B cells, because monitoring of these cells actually allows us to understand disease progression or also analyze the vaccination status. 
And this is mainly because, actually I've said it before, because these TNB cells play such a critical role in generating immunological memory that ultimately protects us from future infections. And of course, this is also the goal of all the different vaccinations um, that have been developed against SARS-CoV-2. And therefore, it's also not surprising that already several studies have examined the role of these SARS-CoV-2 specific TNB cells after vaccination to really be able to pinpoint and also analyze the efficacy of all these different COVID-19 vaccines. And one common method that is often used to analyze these TNB cells is actually flow cytometry. So for example, researchers that analyze T cells often focus on the expression of certain activation markers or also cytokines such as interleukin-2 or interferon gamma. And we will have a closer look at the different analysis methods on the following slides. So at Milton e Biotech, we have developed really fantastic tools to allow you to study these SARS-CoV-2 specific TNB cells in much more detail. So for example, SARS-CoV-2 specific T cells are usually activated by peptides derived from the SARS-CoV-2 virus that are loaded onto MHC molecules that are expressed on antigen presenting cells, for example, on dendritic cells, but also on, on infected cells, for example. So here we will take a closer look at our SARS-CoV-2 peptivator peptide pools, which we actually offer for all the major structures SARS-CoV-2 proteins, like for example, a spike protein. In the case of the B cells, it's a bit different. So they can, for example, recognize also the, uh, the intact virus, or also full length um, SARS-CoV-2 derived proteins. And then eventually the B cell will become a plasma cell that will start to secrete SARS-CoV-2 specific antibody. So to really study SARS-CoV-2 specific B cells or also antibodies in much more detail, we will take a look at our SARS-CoV-2 antigens, which are full length um, proteins that we offer either in a biotinylated or unbiotinylated um, version to really allow analysis as well as enrichment of SARS-CoV-2 specific B cells. So these SARS-CoV-2 specific T cells can actually be described as being antigen specific. But how can we find a, let's say, more general definition of antigen-specific T cells? Well, in principle, of course, all T cells are somewhat antigen-specific. However, when we, when we talk about antigen-specific T cells at Miltony, we actually think of cells that were activated by a specific antigen, for example, a viral peptide in vitro. And this is really in stark contrast to polyclonal activation via CD3, CD28. Within this large pool of T cells, the actual frequency of T cells that will respond to the specific antigen is very, very low. So we should keep in mind here that antigen-specific T cells are in general very rare cells. The antigen-specific stimulation will also trigger cell activation, meaning the upregulation of certain activation markers like, for example, CD25, CD69, or CD154, and also induce cytokine secretion like here TNF-alpha or also gamma interferon. Furthermore, these antigen-specific T cells will also expand following um, stimulation. Of course, their study is highly important in both basic and clinical research as they play a critical role in various infectious diseases during vaccine development or also fundamental in tumor immunology, autoimmune diseases, or also allergic diseases. So how can we analyze antigen and virus-specific T cells in more detail? Well, in general, the methods can actually be classified into two main categories. So first, there's the direct analysis of T-cell specificity using, for example, fluorescently labeled peptide MHC multimeres. These peptide MHC multimeres will bind specifically only to a certain T-cell receptor and then allow a clear identification of, for example, virus-specific T-cells using um, flow cytometry. So while this method certainly provides the highest specificity, it also comes with certain limitations. For example, it works very well for CD8 positive T cells, but only limited for CD4 positive T cells. Furthermore, you will not produce any information on the functional capacity or the T cell subsets, and it's also limited to really defined peptides and also works best for only certain MHC molecules. In addition, we also have the indirect analysis methods which really focus on functional parameters of T cell activation. So for example, the production of certain cytokines or also the upper regulation of specific surface activation markers. But we could also analyze um, T cell proliferation, for example. So here we indirectly identify antigen reactive T cells after antigen specific stimulation in vitro. 
And the good thing is that these methods really work well for all T-cell subsets, also including antigen-specific regulatory T-cells. They will provide T-cell subset-specific information and are mostly independent of the used antigen for simulation and also the analyzed donor. However, the best thing is that all these methods will be analyzed using flow cytometric approaches. So before we dive into the workflow, let's have a quick look into the key challenges that might arise when you work with these very rare cells and how we can help you to overcome them. So for example, when you work with antigen-specific T cells from tissues, you might be limited by the amount of starting material. So our Gentlemax tissue dissociator can really help you to efficiently um, prepare your sample in the first place and make sure that you don't lose these cells from the beginning. Also, an um, insufficient in vitro stimulation could be a big problem, especially for all of these in vitro stimulation assays. So assays where T cells are stimulated with the antigen of interest in vitro. So here we have developed um, really powerful stimulation reagents and also um, several optimized protocols that will help you to uh, make sure that your cells are efficiently stimulated. Also, the low frequency of these very rare antigen-specific T cells of often below 0.1% will make a, um, a reliable flow analysis really difficult. So here you can use our MAX technology to magnetically pre-enrich these cells before analysis. So as I've just said, the cells are often analyzed by flow cytometry, and this is often difficult due to the high background, high background staining um, just because these cells are so rare. However, here with our um, recombinant reaffinity antibodies that actually have been designed, um, keeping flow cytometry in mind, in combination with our um, really sensitive max quan flow cytometers, you can make sure that you detect even the rarest um, T cells. And finally, there's often a rather um, slow translation of early research findings into the clinic. And here we um, offer a very large portfolio of um, translational research products. For example, we have the uh, Max Quant Title Cell Sorter that really allows the GMP compliant cell sorting, or also the Clinimax Prodigy system that performs a completely automated cell processing in a, um, in a closed and also sterile um, system. So we actually combine these different technologies then in an entire workflow, and we strongly believe that the right product combination here is the key to success. So here you can see a schematic drawing of the complete workflow for the analysis of these rare cells. So of course, first T cells would need to be isolated from a donor sample, and this could be tissue, blood, or so PBMCs. For tissue dissociation, of course, the Gentlemax tissue dissociator is a really good choice, especially in combination with our tissue dissociation kits. Next, the cells are stimulated with the antigen of interest in vitro. And here it's really important to know that antigen presenting cells will also need to be present during the stimulation to really ensure efficient activation of the isolated T cells with the specific antigen. If you work with PBMCs, it's really nice because this is already the case. It contains antigen-presenting cells as well as T cells. However, if you work with isolated T cells, you need, you need to add the antigen-presenting cells um, separately. Following the stimulation, only the antigen-specific T cells will get activated, and the cells can then be stained intra- and also extracellularly to assess, for example, their phenotype or also analyze cytokine expression. And then before cell analysis, you can also magnetically pre-enrich these antigen-reactive T cells using really specific um, cell surface activation markers. And then finally, the cells are analyzed either using flow cytometry or also other methods. Um, you can use here our max quant flow cytometer for analysis or also sort the cells, for example, with our max quant title cell sorter. So let's have a look at the different workflow steps on the following slides. When you work with antigen-specific T cells, often everything starts with PBMCs. And you probably know that successful experiments usually start actually with efficient sample preparation. So usually PBMCs are actually prepared via density gradient centrifugation. However, when you work with, let's say, compromised samples, contaminated samples, or also very small samples, these density gradient centrifugation methods can be very tedious, inefficient, and in some cases also dangerous especially when you work with infectious material. 
So here we offer actually two alternative solutions that provide a really fast and untouched magnetic isolation of highly pure PBMCs with a very high recovery. So first we have the so-called MaxPrep PBMC isolation kit, which really completely eliminates any user dependent inconsistencies to really ensure that you have a reliable separation every time you isolate PBMCs. And you can also see the, um, the isolation of PBMCs here on the graph where we compared PBMC isolation using the kit with um, density gradient centrifugation. The kit is actually optimized for very small blood samples, so 1 to 10, 10 milliliters, that will be easily processed in 25 minutes, and you will get highly pure PBMCs. The kit is also semi-automatable with our Multimax um, cell 24, so you can isolate PBMCs from a higher number of samples and then use the PBMCs in any downstream um, or any, any functional downstream assays. So next we have the so-called um, whole blood PBMC isolation kit, which uses the exact same technology as the Max Prep kit, but is fully scalable, also for large blood samples. And it's also fully automatable with the um, Automax Pro instrument in this case. So again, after isolation, these untouched PBMCs can then be used directly for any kind of, of downstream assays, like also um, RNA sequencing, for example, or as a, um, as a good starting point for the magnetic enrichment of other immune cell subsets. So really the high speed, the ease of use, the full automatability, and also the safety aspects uh, make these um, PBMC isolation um, solutions here um, really valuable for, for um, as a starting point for your antigen-specific T-cell um, workflow. So for the really efficient in vitro stimulation of antigen-specific T-cells, we offer the so-called peptivator peptide pools. These peptivator peptide pools are designed to ensure a really highly efficient stimulation of both CD4-positive as well as CD8-positive T-cells. And here we actually cover a very extensive portfolio, also a growing portfolio, of virus, tumor, fungi, microbiota, and also some autoantigens. The peptide pools always consist of 50 mer peptides with an 11 amino acid overlap. And here we cover actually a complete sequence of the respective antigen. The peptivators are available in um, three different grades. So we have here research premium or also a max GMP grade, which will allow a rapid translation of finding into the clinic. And finally, the peptide pools are also available in high throughput version in a very convenient 96 well format to allow more, um, let's say, high throughput application. So we think that these peptivator peptide pools are actually the ideal stimulation reagents for the stimulation of antigen and virus specific T cells. And of course, we also offer our peptivated peptide pools specifically designed for the activation of SARS-CoV-2 specific T cells. And here on the side, you can actually see a simplified image of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which highlights some of the most important um, viral proteins where the immune system, so in this case, the T cells can actually attack. So in here we offer various research grade SARS-CoV-2 peptivator peptide pools directed against the spike protein, which will also be soon available in premium grade with, with actually more than 80% purity, as well as the nucleo and membrane protein. We are also continuously releasing new peptivators for all these um, different SARS-CoV-2 mutation variants. And here it's good to know that we actually have two peptide pools per variant. So we have a mutation pool that covers the mutated sequence, of course, and the respective control pool. And by stimulating your T cells with the mutation and this reference control pool, you are able to really detect mutation specific T cell responses and then also directly compare them to the um, wild type SARS CoV 2 virus. And finally, we also recently added the so called um, SARS CoV 2 peptivator select. And it's the, this, this um, select peptivator is actually a pool of 88 peptides which cover the entire immunodominant epitopes of the um, SARS CoV 2 proteome. And here it's really good to know that the SARS-CoV-2 peptivator select is already available in both premium as well as max GMP grade. So we think that with the SARS-CoV-2 peptivator peptide pools, you are actually able to really ensure efficient stimulation and also analysis of SARS-CoV-2 reactive T cells. Yes, and indeed stimulation with our SARS-CoV-2 peptivator peptide pools results in the efficient activation of, in this case, CD3 positive T cells. So here in this example, blood samples of a healthy donor and a COVID-19 convalescent donor were lysed with an RBC lysis buffer and then stimulated for four hours 
with the indicated um, SARS-CoV-2 peptivator. As a control, we left the cells um, untreated. The cells were then stained following stimulation using an optimized intra and extracellular staining protocol and our flow panel that we specifically developed for the analysis of SARS-CoV-2 reactive T cells. So to assess the um, antigen specific, or in this case, the SARS-CoV-2 specific activation, we gated on interferon gamma producing CD3 positive T cells. And as the plots here clearly show, the COVID-19 convalescent donor actually presents an elevated um, number level of SARS-CoV-2 reactive T cells following the stimulation with the peptivator. And we also nicely quantified that here in the bar graph on the side, where you see the percentage of interferon gamma positive CD3 positive T cells in these um, two donor groups following the different um, stimulation with these um, SARS-CoV-2 peptivators. And you can see that actually combination of the nuclear protein, the membrane protein, and the spike protein shows the highest um, response. So of course, flow cytometry is still the most widely used method for the analysis of these rare antigen-specific T cells. However, even established methods like flow cytometry still have certain limits and challenges. And this was already illustrated and analyzed years ago in a very nice publication by Petra Bacher and colleagues that you can see here on the site, where the authors clearly state that despite this high sensitivity of flow cytometry, it is always limited by the number of events that can be acquired, as well as the, um, the staining background, which is typically for antigen-specific T cells between, let's say, 0.01 and 0.1%. So this really restricts a reliable analysis of cell populations with lower frequencies. So actually, in, in most instances, some of these modern, super-modern flow cytometers are actually sensitive enough to detect at least some cells. There might be certain um, stimulation conditions, for example, where you can hardly detect any specific cell. So to help you overcome these low cell frequencies, you can actually use our MAX microbeads for pre-enrichment. Furthermore, to help you overcome this high background staining and enable a higher resolution analysis, you can use our um, reaffinity recombinant antibodies, which provide a really high specificity and also superior lot-to-lot -lot consistencies. Coupled with our biodyes, they really ensure a very bright staining, a crisp signal with a very low spillover. So we actually think that uh, magnetic pre-enrichment and also these recombinant antibodies are here the key for successful analysis of rare cells. The MAX technology actually comes in four different approaches to really reflect all the different starting materials there might be. So first we have the microbeads and also the microbead kits that are really um, perfect for the positive um, T cell isolation from PBMCs, but also from various other tissue single cell suspensions. They also include the new Realis technology, which allow a label-free cell separation. Second, we have the um, isolation kits that are really idle for all untouched separation needs. So this is a negative isolation. And here you use starting materials as PBMCs or other defined single cell suspensions. So here you really need to know the composition of your cell suspension. For both approaches, we actually cover um, basic T cell subsets as well as almost any um, subtype from different species like human, mouse, rat, and also non-human primates. However, if you want to skip density gradient centrifugation to get your PBMCs, you can also isolate T cells fast and also directly from whole blood. So here is the third option. We have the so-called straight from microbead kits for the positive isolation of human CD3, CD4, and CD8 T cells. And so this straight from is a really nice way to get your T cells in a super fast and reliable way and is also automatable. Last but not least, we also have the so-called Max Express isolation kits for an untouched isolation of human T cells also directly from whole blood. With this Max Express, there's also no need for density gradient centrifugation to get the PBMCs. However, here a column-free approach is used. And in contrast to other technologies, Max Express is not automatable, but still very fast and also very um, uncomplicated to use. Of course, we also offer microbead kits for the specific enrichment of antigen-activated T cells. And here in this example, we actually used CD154 or CD137 microbead kits to enrich either CD4 positive with CD154 or CD8 positive T cells with CD137 microbead kits. And we actually recommend to use CD154 
for antigen-activated CD4-positive T-cell enrichment and CD1037 for the enrichment of antigen-activated CD8-positive T-cells. So in this example here, PBMCs were stimulated with a CMV PP65 peptivator, and then we used the respective kits to enrich um, antigen-activated T-cells. And we left the cells untreated as a negative control. And as you can see, no C154 or C137 positive cells could be enriched in the unsimulated control. However, following stimulation with the peptivator peptide pool, the antigen-specific CD4 positive T cells were successfully enriched using the CD154 microbit kit here on the very right, whereas the CD8 positive T cells were successfully enriched using the CD137 microbit kit. The isolated cells can then be used for any downstream applications like, for example, um, sequencing of T-cell receptors. And if you also want to know more, I really recommend you to, to look at our uh, very nice um, technology paper here on the top right, which really illustrates the technology and its use in much more detail. So furthermore, I also want to point out um, a cell separation product that is really, really unique, the so-called cytokine secretion assays, which allow a viable enrichment of cytokine secreting T-cells from mouse and human samples. And the actual principle of the assay, you can see it here on the left side, is really simple. So first, the secreted cytokines are immobilized on the cellular surface by the so-called catch reagent, and thereby the cell um, basically labels itself with its, with its own cytokines. Then in the second step, the immobilized cytokines are labeled with a fluorofoconjugated um, antibody called the detection reagent, and then allows um, detection using conventional flow cytometry. In an optional third step, the cells can also be um, enriched and used in, in any downstream assays with the help of an antifluorophore magnetic bead and then our, using our uh, MAX technology. So um, this is also why we actually have two different versions of the kits. So for flow analysis only, we have here the so-called detection kits in PE, APC, and FITS available for um, various human and, and murine cytokines. And for the um, enrichment as well as detection of um, cytokine secreting cells, we have the so-called enrichment and detection kits, which are all available um, in PE and also for various human as well as murine cytokines. Please also don't forget that if you want to isolate antigen or virus-specific T-cells in a clinical setting, we also offer the so-called cytokine capture system, which is running on our Clinimax Prodigy platform. So here, actually, first experiments regarding adoptive cell therapy in COVID-19 were performed with research-grade SARS-CoV-2 peptivator peptide pools. However, now you're actually ready for the next steps with our MaxGMP peptivator SARS-CoV-2 Select. In addition, the Clinimax system can also be used for the depletion of CD45 Ra positive T cells to produce a ready to use cell product. And actually, its applicability has been recently demonstrated in a phase one dose escalation study by Antonio Perez Martinez and colleagues who used um, the Clinimax CD45 RA depletion for the treatment of COVID 19. So for flow phenotyping, I would like to briefly talk about actually one of my favorite products when it comes to the analysis of antigen-specific T-cells. And these are the reaffinity recombinant antibodies coupled to our biodyes. I really have to say here that these antibodies have been designed keeping flow cytometry in mind. So these reaffinity recombinant antibodies are actually completely recombinantly engineered, which actually means that we have a full control over their genetic makeup and we can easily express them in mammalian non-hybridoma cell systems. And this also means that these antibodies have a higher purity and superior lot-to-lot -lot consistency compared to monoclonal hybridoma antibodies. Reaffinity recombinant antibodies provide a really low background staining, um, which makes them actually the perfect tool for, for rare cell analysis in general. And our bio dyes are actually our very own fluorescent dyes that work really well in conjunction with the reaffinity antibodies. They, of course, have a very high stain index, very low spillover, provide a very crisp signal, and allow a clear discrimination of these very rare cell populations. Of course, we have these reaffinity recombinant antibodies for all the conventional T cell markers, but also including T cell activation, proliferation, or exhaustion markers. Um, we also have them for cytokines and other T cell markers. And we are also always happy to help you designing your very own flow panel. 
So the recombinant reaffinity antibodies are also included in our new SARS-CoV-2 T cell analysis kits, which can be used for the stimulation as well as analysis of human SARS-CoV-2 reactive T cells in both PBMCs or also whole blood samples. The kits are really designed, let's say, as an, as an all-in-one solution that contain all the reagents for stimulation, um, all the buffers, antibodies for staining, and the positive control to really allow you to um, directly start with your experiment. And here on the, on the um, side, you can actually see the workflow. So you would either start from, from whole blood or PBMCs, stimulate your cells with a included SARS-CoV-2 peptidator peptide pool, and then prepare and stain your cells for um, flow analysis. So the, the cells can actually be analyzed on any conventional flow cytometer, but of course work really good on our uh, max quant um, analyzers. And it's also good to know that we um, offer um, one version of the kit that does not contain a SARS-CoV-2 peptidator peptide pool, but um, here you can choose your, um, your own stimulation reagents or also combine these kits with a different peptidator peptide pool to also analyze other antigen specificities. So, of course, also here I've brought you some exemplary data. <clears throat> Sorry. So, in this example here, we actually use the SARS CoV 2 T cell analysis kits to stimulate and stain PBMCs of a COVID 19 convalescent donor. So, first, the cells were stimulated with the indicated SARS CoV 2 peptidator peptide pools. So, for example, the nuclear protein, protein N, or the membrane protein, also the spike protein. We used a mixture of CMV and EBV um, peptidators as a positive control or left the cells unstimulated as a negative control. Following stimulation, we then stained the cells with this optimized antibody panel that is included in all of our kits. And we use um, we also stain CD69 in this free PE Vio 615 channel. So the cells were then recorded on our MaxQuant um, 16 analyzer and then, an and then analyzed. So for the analysis, we actually here pre-gated either on CD4 here in the, the upper row or on CD8 here in the lower row. And to assess T cell activation, we actually focused on CD154 and TNF alpha um, for the um, activated CD4 positive T cells or on CD69 and gamma interferon on CD8 positive T cells. And as you can see here, these ASCOV2 reactive T cells actually responded very specifically to the stimulation, especially with the um, M peptivator, but also with the spike protein peptivator. And this then just, just simply indicates an exposure of the donor to the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And you can nicely discriminate the T cell responses using this optimized antibody panel. And in addition, you could also use the kit, for example, to detect a vaccine-specific response where you would focus on the um, response you would you would get with the um, spike protein. So apart from the SARS-CoV-2 T cell analysis kits, we also offer other really convenient complete kits for flow cytometric analysis. For example, we have the so-called um, rapid cytokine inspectors, which allow rapid multi-parameter analysis of both activated as well as CDA positive T cells directly from fresh human whole blood or also PBMC samples. And here the kits actually enable you in a, in a, to do a one-step detection of both surface markers and intracellular cytokines. So also we also have the so-called Maxplex cytokine kits available for both human and mouse samples, and they allow a multiplex analysis of several soluble cytokines. So for example, up to 12 human or um, 10 murine cytokines in just one sample. So for example, say culture supernatant. And the kits also work basically on every standard flow cytometer. And last but not least, we have also have the um, so-called eight color immunophenotyping kit, which really enables you to do um, 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 a flow-based evaluation of various leukocyte subsets, for example, from PBMCs, also from human whole blood, to really reliably identify, um, for example, monocytes, neutrophils, eosinophils, TNB cells, as well as NK cell populations. And all of those kits here are actually compatible with our so-called flow express modes, which are available on all our max quant analyzers. And you can imagine these flow express modes as some kind of software module that allows you to perform an automated analysis of um, data that are generated with these kits. And if you uh, want to have more information, I would recommend you to check out these webinars 
that we've created on these kits and express modes that you can find here on the on the lower right. Yeah, so our um, flow portfolio is actually rounded off with our own flow analysis and flow sorting instruments of the so-called uh, MaxQuan series. So here on the left side, we see a MaxQuan Analyzer 16, which is a really powerful um, benchtop flow cytometer and allows you to analyze up to 16 optical parameters. And yeah, for me here, really the clue is that the uh, MaxQuan analyzers allow a fully automated sample acquisition as well as data analysis using these express mode um, software modules that are available for a lot of our um, flow phenotyping kits. And furthermore, its small size really allows to place these um, flow cytometers basically under any conventional flow hood, which then further adds to operator safety, which is especially important when you work with, um, let's say, contaminated samples. And then here on the right side, we see the MaxQuant Tidal Cell Sorter, which um, opposed to classical droplet sorters actually uses this unique um, cartridge for sorting. So it has a unique um, microchip technology and therefore it allows a really gentle and also fast sorting and ensures the highest viability of even um, very fragile cells such as um, virus specific T or B cells. And furthermore, the, the closed and sterile cartridge system that you also see here on the right side actually make the tie to the idle instrument for any um, GMP environment. So here you can see a schematic overview of the entire antigen and virus specific T cell portfolio and workflow. So here you actually um, recognize that we offer products for the whole workflow. So really from sample preparation to cell culture to cell separation and also cell analysis. And of course, you will find much more information on our website. So last but not least, I would just like to um, briefly mention that Milton Biotech offers a really large product portfolio to um, allow a smooth transition from research to clinical applications. So I have now shown you um, our research solutions for the analysis of antigen-specific T cells in the context of um, SARS-CoV-2 research. And now Kirsten will show you how to use cell therapy to fight infections. So Kirsten, the stage is yours. Cell therapy products based on virus-specific donor T-cells have been used to treat opportunistic viral infections in the context of allogeneic hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. It has been discussed whether this treatment option could also be applied to COVID-19 patients. In this context, I would like to present the work of three different groups from Singapore, the United Kingdom and Spain. As the authors explain in these publications, the transient presence of donor T cells in COVID-19 patients could be possible under certain conditions. On the other hand, it would be imperative to prevent allo-reactive reactions against the patient. Multidee Biotech offers workflows for the production of cell products that are used in certain cases to prevent or treat opportunistic infections in patients after allogeneic hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. In their publications, they also describe how these workflows could be used to produce cell therapy products against SARS-CoV-2 infections. First, some background information on T-cell-based cell therapy against infections. This treatment was originally developed in the context of allogeneic hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. Until the reconstitution of the new immune system, these patients are at high risk for opportunistic viral infections, such as infections with CMV, ADV, EBV, or BKV. Antiviral drug-resistant cases have been treated with adoptive T-cell therapy. Metony Biotech provides tools for manufacturing T-cell-based products that are used to treat certain viral infections in allogeneic hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. For 17 years, the clinical application of these treatment options has been continuously published in peer-reviewed journals. By now, new ways to treat COVID-19 patients with adoptive T-cell therapy under certain conditions have been described. Let us start with the concept of transferring virus-specific T-cells to combat certain viral diseases. As reported, adoptive transfer of allogeneic VSTs can rapidly destroy virus-specific immunity and control viral infections after allogeneic stem cell transplantation. Sources of virus-specific T-cells may include stem cell donor-derived virus-specific T-cells, 
as in Alzheimer's hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. This is the majority of cases. And there are also reports on third-party donor-derived virus-specific T-cells, which have been used in patients with infections after solid organ transplantation. The production of antiviral T-cell products requires the enrichment of relevant virus-specific T-cells and depletion of potentially unreactive T-cells. There are several strategies to produce these products, as for example those that are based on ex vivo expansion. Another option is provided by the CleanMax Prodigy cytokine capture system from Milton Biotech. For this option, it is necessary to find a convalescent donor for the desired viral target. How does the CleanMax cytokine capture system work within the CleanMax Prodigy process? The CleanMax Prodigy process integrates all critical steps of the CCS workflow from antigen specific T cell stimulation to labeling of target cells magnetic isolation, and final formulation within 12 hours of total time. Importantly, all cell processing steps are automated, ensuring a convenient and highly standardized separation process. This includes stimulation of the starting product from a convalescent donor with a virus-specific peptide to activate the desired VST, separation of these cells via the interferon gamma secretion, and the magnetic separation strategy to enrich interferon gamma-producing cells. Recently, we have launched a max gmp pep divider targeting SARS-CoV-2 specific peptides. Furthermore, we will be glad to provide the reference list with clinical applications of the Clinimax cytokine capture system. All necessary consumables for this procedure are supplied by Milton A. Biotech. The Clinimax Prodigy CCS interferon gamma system is available as a CE marked medical device application. Outside the EU, regional legislations and regulations are applied. The clinical use of the cell product is subject to regional legislation and is under the responsibility of the user. Let us now take a look at the second possibility of producing T cell products against certain infections. Donor derived CD45 very depleted cell products have been used in the field of allogeneic hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. Memory T cells provide immunity against many viral infections that the donor has experienced during his lifetime. Prior to clinical application, it was shown in mouse models that the allo-reactive potential is high in the naive T cell compartment and significantly reduced in the memory T cell compartment. Clinimax CD45 array depleted cell products are used to treat opportunistic infections and to enhance immune reconstitution in the setting of allogeneic stem cell transplantation. CD45 array is an isoform of the CD45 family that is present on 100% of naive T cells, but not on CD45 viral positive central and defective memory T cells. It is also present on approximately 100% of B cells, 80% of K cells, and 30% of monocytes. CD45 array is not a typical T cell marker but it is an ideal marker to deplete other reactivity from a product in one step, leaving specific memory T cells with the given benefits and thus representing an excellent production option for clinical applications. Milton Biotech offers two technical options for the clinical grade depletion of CD45 array positive cells from leukopheresis products performed on either the Clinimax Plus device or the Clinimax Prodigy device. The starting fraction is labeled with antibodies targeting the surface marker CD45RA. Magnetic separation results in a target cell fraction passively enriched for memory T cells. The Clinimax Plus CD45 system has been released to market in 2011. Please contact us if you would like to receive the full list of references for this application. Consumables for these procedures are supplied by Milton e Biotech. Two CE-certified medical device applications are available for depletion of CD45 array positive cells. The Clinimax Plus CD45 array system provides a semi-automated procedure for starting products containing up to 50 times 10 to the 9 white blood cells. The Clinimax Prodigy PB45 array system provides a fully automated process for smaller cell amounts in the starting material. In addition to leukophoresis products, whole blood can also be used as starting material with the system. Outside the EU, regional legislations and regulations are applied. 
The clinical use of the cell product is subject to regional legislation and is under the responsibility of the user. Several groups have developed manufacturing processes for cell products from convalescent donors targeting SARS-CoV-2 infections. We present here three publications in which these new developments are described. They are all open access papers. Wing Leong and his co-workers describe a process for flexible and rapid manufacturing of VSTs once a donor is available. This option uses the Climax cytokine capture system. The publication from Kuba et al. coming from the UK describes a process that also starts with the enrichment of virus-specific T-cells using the Climax cytokine capture system. The difference to the previous publication is that here a culturing step is added to increase the harvest of VSTs. The final product can be provided within a biobank. The third publication by researchers from Spain also describes the generation of cell products for biobanking. However, here manual T-cell products are provided that are generated using the Clinimax Plus CD40 preparation system. Infusion of these cells in COVID-19 patients has been previously published by Antonio Perez and his collaborators. I would now like to briefly present these important publications. However, due to the large amount of information contained in this publication, I will only briefly touch on selected points. To get a complete picture of these important projects, I recommend reading the original publications. The two objectives of the study by Wing Liung and collaborators were to investigate whether sufficient numbers of SARS-CoV-2 specific T cells are present in the blood of convalescent donors. Another important point was to investigate whether it is possible to produce clinical grade products overnight. For all blood or leukophoresis products were collected from the convalescent donors and buffy coats were prepared from the whole blood samples. Leukophoresis products and buffy coats were stimulated with overlapping peptides of SARS-CoV-2 specific S, N and M proteins. The stimulated products were processed by Clinimax cytokine capture system procedures and the resulting fractions were analyzed for the amount of interferon gamma producing cells, their phenotype, T cell receptor V beta specificity and functionality. The enrichment procedures resulted in final products that contained a median of 0.98 times 10 to the 6 interferon gamma positive T cells. To demonstrate functionality, one of the samples was successfully restimulated with peptide loaded dendritic cells. Subgroup analysis revealed a relative depletion of naive T cells and an enrichment of effector mammary T cells in the enriched fractions, suggesting that allele reactivity was reduced. T cell receptor V beta spectrotyping showed markedly high oligoclonal peaks in the final products. They also concluded that overnight production of clinical grade SARS CoV 2 specific T cells is feasible for therapeutic purposes. The other reactive potential was reduced while virus specific T cells were retained in the product. We also suggest that the dosage of 5 times 10 to the 3 SARS CoV 2 specific T cells per kilogram based on previously administered cell numbers in other clinical settings. Under this assumption, one unit of whole blood could be sufficient to produce three to six products for adult recipients. The authors note that based on previous studies by other authors, very specific T cells from donors who shared only one HLA molecule are effective. Based on this information, for the six donors in the study, the probability of potential patients having at least one HLA match would be more than 88% for Caucasians, 95% for Chinese, 97% for Malays, and 99% for Indian populations. All this and much more details can be found in the origin publication as given below. The group of John Campbell and his collaborators is featured in the forthcoming publication by Rachel Cooper et al. The goal of the study was to characterize SARS-CoV-2 peptide-specific mammary T cell populations in convalescent donors. In addition, the authors aim to investigate the feasibility of isolating and expanding these T cells on a clinical scale using an integrated cell culture step. The experimental design included a scale-up experiments 
functional testing of the octane cells, and experiments comparing blood from convalescent donors with blood from donors who have not undergone SARS-CoV-2 infection. Important findings of this study are that generation of interferon gamma responses in SARS-CoV-2 by specific T cells from convalescent donors is possible after peptide stimulation, isolation, and expansion. Another important finding was that the presence of HLA class 1 and 2 alleles is widespread in the UK population, and that some specific HLA subtypes with strong peptide presentation ability were identified. Finally, the authors concluded that their method for generating large amount of very specific T cell products is feasible for clinical trials supporting severe SARS-CoV-2 infections with comprised endogenous T cell response. Here you can get an idea of the production method developed by John Campbell and his collaborators in Edinburgh, UK. To begin with, a leukopheresis product is obtained from a convalescent donor. The very specific T cells contained therein are stimulated and enriched with the Kinemax prodigy CCS interferon gamma system and appropriate SARS CoV 2 specific peptides. The harvested SARS CoV 2 specific T cells are then cultured for 21 days with irradiated cells from the non target cell fraction as fetal cells. As indicated, the final product contains between 10 to the 10th and 10 to the 11th cells. Restimulating experience with dendritic cells demonstrated virus-specific T cell functionality after cultivation. The final product is then frozen and can be stored in a biobank system. After 14 days of expansion, central memory CD4 positive cells are the predominant subtypes. Furthermore, and as stated, the expanded virus specific T cells showed negligible co expression of T cell exhaustion markers PD1 and TIP3 in both the CD4 and CD8 compartment, indicating the CALTA expansion has not induced an exhaustive T cell phenotype. All these and much more details can be found in the original publication as given below. Tony Paris and his collaborators from Spain have developed a different method for delivering cell therapy products to COVID-19 patients. They use Kilimax CD45 array depletion to generate products that are stored within a COVID-19 biobank from convalescent donors. An important question was whether SARS-CoV-2 specific memory T cells exist in convalescent donors and whether they can be enriched by CD45 array depletion. This was shown in experience with PBMCs from uninfected and convalescent donors. In stimulation experiments with three peptides of the S and M protein, interferon gamma secreting CD45 RO positive T cells were detected in convalescent donors but not in uninfected donors. A clinical scale product was generated using the Clinimax Plus CD45 array system. Again, Interferon gamma secreting CD45 RO positive cells could be generated in the target cell fraction. To check functionality after freezing and thawing, the final product was frozen and thawed and stimulated with interleukin 15 for 72 hours, and the subsequent phenotypic assay revealed a phenotype characteristic of an activated state. Here we can get an overview of the production process. A leukophoresis product was obtained from a convalescent donor. As reported, after a Clinimax Plus CD45 array depletion procedure, 80% of the cells were CD45 array negative T cells. About 84% of the T cells were CD4 positive and about 14% were CD8 positive. After stimulation with SARS-CoV-2 specific peptides, the percentage of interferon gamma secreting cells in the T cell subsets range from 0.31 to 0.38%. The predominant phenotype was central memory T cells. All this and much more details can be found in the original publications as given below. Recently, the use of CD45 array depleted memory T cells in the treatment of COVID-19 patients has been reported by Antonio Perez and his co-workers within a phase one clinical trial. Eligible participants were hospitalized patients with PCR confirmed SARS CoV 2 infections and according to further inclusion criteria regarding polynomia, lymphopenia, and oxygen demand. 
Enrollment was based on match with the HLA genotype of the convalescent donor and according to inclusion-exclusion criteria. Signal infusions were applied in a dose-escalating manner. Ten patients were enrolled and nine patients were treated. Three patients each received three escalating doses ranging from 1 times 10 to the 5 cells per kilogram over 5 times 10 to the 5 cells per kilogram up to 1 times 10 to the 6 cells per kilogram of CD45RA negative memory T cells. We also stated that this study provided preliminary evidence supporting the idea that treatment of COVID-19 patients with moderate to severe symptoms using convalescent CD45RA negative memory T cells was feasible and safe. This clinical application is being further investigated in a phase two clinical trial. All this and much more details can be found in the original publication as given below. With that, we end today's webinar and thank you for your attention. If you have further questions, please contact us via email. Thank you, Lorenz and Kirsten, for your informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen. We'll answer as many of your questions as we have time for. What is the main difference between cell products obtained by the CCS system and CD45RA depletion? Yeah, so thank you. I hope you can hear me. Um, yes. I'd like to answer that question. So the difference is that the memory cell product is obtained by a single depletion step and that the product is therefore quickly available. So there's no further activation step necessary. Um, inside the patient, the memory cells will become activated in case of a viral infection. And uh, the depletion of 45 RA uh, leads to an almost complete active depletion of naive T cells um, that are mainly responsible for for viral activity. All B cells are depleted, and besides the memory T cells, only few K cells are preserved, and most of the monocytes and granulocytes will stay destroyed. Um, the Tembra cells are CD45 RA positive, and, and they are therefore excluded. Um, and the CCS US products uh, are generated after um, the exposure to virus specific peptides, and at least to a fraction of pure T cells, or mainly pure T cells, but they are also passively depleted of naive T cells because the naive T cells would secrete interferon gamma. So that means both cell types get a um, a fraction of cells that is depleted of naive T cells, either actively or passively, for both products are safe. Thank you. Next question. Do you have protocols for the flow analysis of T cell fractions? Um, yes, we have. So we have for both um, applications, we have uh, flow protocols. We have um, uh, we have a flow protocol for the, the, for the uh, analysis of CD45 RA depleted cells. And we have furthermore a um, pre installed program on the Max Quad to measure the cells after the interferon gamma secretion assay. So to um, say that the method that you can um, use this our flow cytometer device, Max Quad. That we have not only a protocol, but only a pre installed program to run that. Okay, and it looks like we have time for one more question. Why mm -hmm. why is the Clinimax Plus a semi-automatic automated application which steps are not automated? Uh well, so yes. Um the Clinimax Plus uh um does not have possibilities to do all the cell washings before the magnetic separation for the um those washing steps and the addition of the magnetic labeling reagent and uh, labeling procedure and washing steps after that, they are all um, done manually with a back centrifuge. 
uh, but then the um, magnetic separation procedure is entirely automated on the Kinemax class. That's the difference to the Prodigy. Uh, the Prodigy offers a complete automation also for the washing steps and the, um, and the magnetic labeling steps. Well, thank you, Lorenz and Kirsten, for your time today and your important research. We would also like to thank LabRoots and our sponsor, Milteni Biotech, for underwriting today's educational webcast. Before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. Questions we did not have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by the speaker via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. This webcast can be viewed on demand. LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, goodbye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye.